Guys, thank you very much for that patience. Um, we're getting rolling here at about eight after we were supposed to start at 7.30, just a little bit of confusion from a technology standpoint. Um, that's what happens when they put strength coaches in charge of this. So um, we're gonna get it worked out and, and I think it's going smoothly so far and it's going to for the rest of this, this round table. Uh, very nice to have everybody on board as always. Um, honored and, and thrilled to have Coach Leanne Blinn um, on board. And, and we're going to ask her, and again, we're going to do this informal, Coach. So I'm going to just ask you a little bit about yourself and, and kind of let you introduce yourself. Um, so if you would, just start out um, telling me who you are, where you are, um, where you come from, what your, your illustrious career has been to this point, um, and maybe some important facts or, or some, some cool, cool tidbits about um, where you're at now. All right, so um, I've been in the field for 20 years. I started out with Dan Dalrymple um, at uh, Miami, Ohio as an intern. I was a strength, con actually, athletic training major at uh, Miami, Ohio, and I did an internship with him, and that was my first go with strength conditioning. From there, I've been, I've been across the country and back at uh, the college setting, the private setting, and now settled into the high school setting. And that's where I've been for the past five years as a strength coach at Franklin High School. Awesome. If you would, tell me a little bit about the demographic makeup of Franklin. What what does a, a typical student look like? What um what is their family environment? What is their neighborhood um, community environment? What is a student? It's it's a public school, correct? Public school, very white collar, very white. I mean, we are very <laughs> diversity is slim. Diversity is very slim at uh, Franklin High School. Um, you know, we have a little bit of diversity, but not huge at all, at all. Okay. Um, um, say it again. Sorry. No. Uh, if you were had another note as far as that went, go ahead. I was going to go to the next question. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. From from an athletic program standpoint, what's what's the success of the programs? What um maybe what is the what does the typical athlete look like? um coming in we're a very successful program our high school is about 1700 students a little over 1700 students so a big we're division one um around massachusetts is a little bit different how they division um but we're the highest division they base it off the most number of kids um we do very well especially in our women's sports we do phenomenal on women's sports and decent in our guys sports um football i think is going to start coming back up we have a new football coach and i think it's gonna he's gonna take a change and uh start getting that program back up and running too so but we, we're very successful all of our teams most of our teams make the make the uh you know championships and the playoffs and all that so awesome um, I know you told us a little bit about your background and who and where you came from. If you would just kind of like an elevator speech of programming philosophy, what what you look for in your athletes, what you look to train, what you look to perfect over their time with you. I look for um, overall athleticism, movement, um, strength, power, speed. And it's pretty much it's kind of I come from Joe Pan. I come from kind of house's philosophy of of training training athletes to be athletes um they're training to become a better football player basketball player um hockey player the weight room is a supplement to help them become that um you know my big thing is if you want to become a, a you know better hit hitting in baseball then you know you, you gotta practice hitting but if you want to become stronger and more powerful get into the weight room and the weight room is going to help offset that um i periodize my kids to some degree, um, it's a little bit different. We have a summer season, we have a, a fall season, a winter season, and a spring season. A lot of our athletes are multi-sport athletes. They play either two or three seasons. And now with all this AU and club and everyone playing year-round hockey or year-round soccer, it's really kind of hard sometimes to get these kids in and get them consistent. Um, but the kids that I do have are really consistent and I've seen huge, huge gains and changes. Um, we do – I. Based on my program, I start basic with them, um, just like our squat, squat progression, and then I get more advanced. You know, some of our kids now, as they're seniors, I'll use bands with them. I'll do accommodating resistance type things, but it's not something I'm going to do with the ninth grader coming in. Half the ninth graders I got coming in can't squat, you know, without bending forward or being on their toes. So it's really progressive along the way. Awesome. What about Olympic weightlifting? Um. I love Olympic lifts. I started when I was at, in grad school um, at uh, Northern Arizona University. I competed in Olympic weightlifting. It has its time and place. We have a brand new school, beautiful brand new school. Our weight room is 1,800 square feet. 
So in an 1800 square foot weight room safety standpoint, I really don't have a lot of safety, a lot of room to be able to do Olympic lifting. Um, some of my upper level kids, my upper level football players, I definitely will have them clean. Some of my kids do snatch, um, but they have to be that top level kid to get to that point. Um, our summer program, we set up two weight rooms. So we have a weight room set up, a, um, a satellite weight room set up in our small gym. So we, we set up uh, six platforms. We set up racks, the whole nine yards, and they able to spend about our, our whole seven week program, getting kids to clean and, and do pulls and things like that because I actually have platforms in our brand new weight room, 1800 square feet. It can't carry over really during school year, which thanks for me. But I could I can modify things, box jumps and all that. Sure. Is there any sort of competitive lifting of any sort, power lift or, or Olympic lifting in, in Massachusetts? There is. Um, we have uh, actually uh, USA Power Lifting um, we're in conjunction with that. So I actually have a powerlifting club at my high school. And a lot of the high schools around the area, Zavarian, St. John's, Shrewsbury, St. John's Prep, um, probably about five other public schools. We have a season, which is December through March. And we have our state championships in March. So it's a club sport. Um, I get This year I had 23 kids that competed. It's pretty cool. Awesome. You mentioned athletic training early on. Is yep. there any ATC responsibilities that you have on campus, or do you have somebody there that's full time or, or there um, we working? We have a full time with... trainer. So oh. trainer Jen and I work hand in hand very well together. Um, when we were in our old school, we were kind of like next to each other. Now it's like down the hall, around the hall, so I don't see her as much. Um, but if I have kids that come in and say, hey, coach, my shoulder hurts. Um, I heard it at a game last week. I'm like, go see Trainer Jen. Trainer Jen's going to evaluate you, see what's going on. She'll give you rehab if needed. And then we'll come in. You'll come back in the weight room, and I'll modify your program to, to accommodate what's going on. So we awesome. have a great relationship. Awesome. What about from a, a movement screening screening standpoint? Um, do you have a particular movement screen? Do you do you look at um, screening movement? Is it something that's visual and you look at it from a daily basis? What are your thoughts there? I look at it from a daily basis. Um, I look at it um, because our kids are going in 10 million different directions and have so much going on. I look at it from a daily basis. I have a girl, who a basketball player came in. I had four AU games this weekend and I got wrecked. And she just needs modification. She came and her back is killing her. She can't even bend over and touch her toes. I'm not going to ever, I'm going to modify her program kind of thing to that daily. Um, coming in, I do screen my freshmen as they come in. Um, modified movement screen I'll use. Um, I watch them squat. I see them lunge. I see them, um, you know, can they do specific movements and bend over? Can they sit? Can they hinge? That kind of stuff. But it's not a formal screen at all. Um, gotcha. Cool. The, the next question is going to be at least somewhat related to that coming from Gary Schofield. Yep. What do you evaluate? Um, what do you test and when? So football, every sport's a little bit different. So my boy soccer coach or, is awesome. Fran is, he's into the weight room. Boy soccer comes in during the season twice a week. He's year round kind of thing. We test um, 300 yard shuttle. We test, test beep test. We uh, bench test them and chin up test them and vertical jump and standing long jump test them. So we do all those for boys soccer. Um, you know, he, he likes to do his conditioning tests. We test the power basically based off of vertical jump, standing long jump. Some kids, when they leave us in the summer, they don't have a way to squat or do things. So we kind of make it a little less, you know, injury, whatever, how you would want to say it. Um, with football, we test cleans. Um, well, we test cleans in summer. So we'll clean in the summer. Um, during the off season for football, we'll test deadlift, we'll test bench, we'll test squat, um, vertical jump, standing long jump. Um, our old football coach, we did 300 yard shuttles. Our new football coach, we're probably going to end up doing um, 10 to 10s with him. So we test different. Our girls' volleyball team, we test chin ups. They have to get three chin ups in order to get on the court. They do two 300 yard shuttles. They got to pass it within an average of 65. They have a push up test. They have sit up tests. So I kind of gauge it towards the coaches a little bit. Um, I've wanted to do like a big board and have testing and, you know, get up the squat, you know, squats up there for the best freshmen. And, and it just, our weight room is again, too small to get everyone in tested. Like so you'll have, you'll have kind of maybe like an, an early on briefing meeting with the coaches and they'll say maybe, you know, this is this is what I prefer. This is what I feel confident and comfortable with my athletes if they pass this conditioning test or 
um, can accomplish this many pull-ups or, or whatever that may be. And you kind of come to a, a mutual agreement with that coach. Yep. Right? Correct. Yep. Okay. That's what we've had to do at the high school level. And again, you know, facilities being so small and some coaches are, you know, most of the coaches are, are really bought into the program. Some aren't, you know, in, so into testing like football is like, Hey, you know what? I want you to hit your numbers or I want you to, I want to see what you've done all year round and how you, well you progress. Some of them really are. And some of them aren't so much gotcha. yet. And from, this is just a related question from yeah. what I was wondering. Uh, you don't have to give me an exact number, but maybe a roundabout percentage. How many coaches, sport coaches, are the same sport coaches um, from when you started five years ago? You have actually, at Fr actually at Franklin High School, ninety percent of them are. That's pretty cool. We uh, we have we have phenomenal coaches at Franklin, and they stay. Um, coach Geisen, who's our girls soccer coach, and he's a uh, boys track coach, indoor and outdoor. Sorry, Coach Geisen, he's older than dirt. He's been around forever, but he's a great coach. Um, he used to co he used to teach at the high school. Um, Fran Besaitis is um, our boys soccer coach. He's in his 70s. He's been coaching there 15 years. We have unbelievable um, retaining coaches. It's been it's been great. So, and, and everyone's bought in. Every every single coach is bought into that into the weight room as part of being a part of their program. And most of those coaches, are they teachers on campus or do they work on campus or are they outside? Um, some, it's about 50, 50, it's about yeah. 50, 50. Cool. Yeah. Um, this might've answered the next question somewhat just in your meeting yeah. with the sport coaches. Gary Schofield again was wondering if you have a unified program, if you look for kind of one program for everybody, if you come through, you know, the Franklin high school strength and conditioning program, you are going to go from block zero to, that elite stage where they're ready to graduate and it's going to look the same for every athlete regardless of sport um or are you looking at different programs for fall winter spring and and multi-sport athletes i pretty much have a unified program where everyone's going to go through um you know everyone's going to do some type of squat whether it's back squat front squat some kids are going to goblet squat um and it depends on how they progress through i do have my football guys doing more deadlifts and pulls and things like that but my volleyball girls, they trap bar deadlift as well. So they may not get to um, a conventional dead. They may just trap bar dead as they go. Um, but I do, I look at them. I look at what I call areas of weakness is what I put or areas of concern. So when I look at a female athlete, I look at, okay, ACLs are an area of concern, hamstring injuries. So we do extra work. So main things, everyone's going to squat, everyone's going to bench, everyone's going to do some type of explosive work, whether it's a clean or a box jump. Um, but it's those little things that count. Um, I look at, we have boys hockey, girls hockey. I look at hip flexors. I look at, and that's a, kind of the athletic trainer in me, I guess, is looking at um, areas of injury and areas of concern, low backs and things like that. So it's, I wouldn't say it's sport specific because I absolutely positively hate that term sport specific. Gotcha. Um, Coach Rob wants to know what are your tier tier one movements for your box zero athletes um, going lower, upper, and total. Um, so by box zero is going to be a goblet squat or a front squat. Um, I'll do you know if kid can't do a push up, he's going to stay with dumbbells for a while before he gets to a bar. Um, you know I will get chin ups. I'll do um, for upper body. I'll do band chin ups, uh, some rows and things like that. Working on scapular traction um, for them. And then for I'll do box jumps um, with them in terms of um, explosive type movements. Um, and I do will have them deadlift, trap bar deadlift. I will have them learn how to hinge like RDLs and shrugs, RDL and upright row. So I'm getting them into those movements. And then I'll start getting them into pulls for my total body stuff. Awesome. Cool. Um, you explained a little bit in there and you, you, you touched on it, but um, I think we have a, a pretty clear picture as far as your progressions for the for the primary lifts. What about your progressions for lower lower body plyos? Um, is is there a specific protocol that you go through um, there? When do you see these athletes, um, and what that progression looks like? So plyos, I kind of spend a lot more time in the summer doing plyos, and I set up a progression based during the week. Um, I don't. It's weird. The way our kids are set up, um, they're not – I don't get them all the time. Like some of the kids I'll have for the summer, but I won't have for the spring. So I kind of keep basic ply progressions for them. I'll get them uh, – we'll do some jump ropes. We'll do some um, 
ankle pops. Then we'll start doing going up into tuck jumps and repetitive jumps and um, higher box jumps and higher uh, her pops and things like that. So we'll start low base, low plyos, and then move on move on up. Awesome. Back to Gary Schofield. Do you monitor recovery at all? And do you integrate any piece of technology into the weight room? Technology. Well, as we can see, how we had the problem with the whole <laughs> internet true. connection thing. Technology is not my number one thing. Um, you know, our school, our brand new school, we have six um, TVs all around. I would like to be able to bring in like Coach's Eye and do some different things like that. Um, our programs itself, I would like to be able to have them track things. But right now, we're paper, paper and pencil as we go. Um, even percentages, I'm not big on percentages right now for our kids. Like our upper level kids, I'll write them percentages in terms of like writing out, figuring out, and calculating. But technology, I, that's one thing I am not good with. Again, I think I'm showing my age of 43. So technology was not a big thing. It, the Email just came out when I was in grad school. So that's uh, that's what the difference is between now and then. So, <laughs> so, so. If, if an athlete's not coming in with a, with a set percentage for that day, how are you um, determining or how are you um, expressing to them what load they're going to do? Or is it something that you're going to walk them through on a daily basis? I'll walk them through on a daily basis. It's how you feel. They got to say to me, hey, you know, I'll watch my squat. This is my third set or my fourth set of squat. And then we mark it down. So they all have sheets on them. We mark it down. You know, we've had emotional days for kids. Some days you have everything's going on. And I always tell my kids, education comes first. You know, they're all stressed out because they've got this or that going on. Um, so, and some days they just feel great. You know, I had a kid today. Hey, you know what? I want to go up another 10 pounds. All right, let's do it. You know, and let's see where it leads you. So how long has it taken you to, to kind of burn the trust in you for one, but also for the athletes to gain your trust to say, Hey, you know, I trust you to, to tell me when you're having a good day, or I trust you to, to take it a little bit easier when you had a stressful week or, or weren't as fresh after a, lo you know, a long weekend as you thought they'd be. Um, how long did that take you? Was that kind of something off the bat? They saw you and they kind of were, um, a little bit fearful and, and followed everything you said or did it, was the process? There's a little, uh, I don't want to say love, hate, I should say love scared kind of going yeah. on. Um, most of the kids respect what I do. They're, they're scared of me. Like to some degree they know when I'm serious, but they've always, we've always been open. You know, I joke and have a good time with the kids and there, it was all, almost automatic where they're like, all right, what do I need to do? I feel great. I feel like, you know, so it wasn't, and I think probably being a teacher does help. I've been a teacher for two years, so I get to know them inside the classroom and not just inside the weight room. And for me, you know, during their in season, I go to games and I see them outside of being in the weight room. And I think that's huge in creating relationships with kids is you see them outside of my element, which is in my four walls of the weight room, I go see them in their element and it creates an automatic relationship right there with them. Now, what I don't think we touched on this yet. What about the other way around? Do those athletes ever come to see you compete or have you made it known to them that <laughs> um, you compete? And maybe you can tell us a little bit about what your competition um, experience has been to this point. And you, you don't don't feel like you're boasting. You can tell us some of your accolades. That you've had. Um. I've been competing since 1996, so this is my 20th year competing. I've competed at World's Strongest Woman. I did World's Strongest Woman in 2003. I've been competing in powerlifting since 1996. I started weightlifting in 95. I played field hockey and softball in college, so that kind of gave me that whole competitive background. Um, I have a world record in the bench at 414. Um, that is with a bench shirt. Um, and I'm getting ready to compete this coming weekend. Um, so kids think I'm a freak. They definitely think I'm a freak. Um, but they're very supportive of the whole nine yards. And they'll actually, I know, uh, we all have Chromebooks at school. So all the kids, it's one-to-one, -one, you know, technology. So I went to Worlds in Luxembourg back in November. And they're not in class doing their classwork. They're in class watching me on, <laughs> you know, on YouTube and following me and, and live stream and seeing what's going on. So. Um, so they're really supportive. The parents are really supportive too, and the kids are. So, you know, awesome. when they when they hear I've pulled a plane and they see pictures of me pulling a plane and stuff, they're like, "Damn!" You know. <laughs> so a little, a little bit of a freak. I'm not normal. <laughs> do you train at the school? Do you do you choose to lift there? Do you have a a, a powerlifting gym in the area that you'll go train? I at? go to a powerlifting gym in the area. So I used to own athletic based training, which for about 
for about eight years. It was a sports training um, facility. Even when I owned that facility, I went to um, Gold's Gym and trained um, just so I could get out of my head, get away, put my headphones on, and no one bothers me. I usually go in the corner and hide and, and all that. I can't really hide too long, but I hide, try to hide. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's tough when you're there all day long to just yeah. kind of say, you yep. know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to motivate myself um, to stick around and lift. Yeah. Um, on here it's good to get off campus have you had any athletes that have, have kind of followed in or you know student athletes that maybe say an athlete that didn't go to college for maybe a football player didn't go to play in college and to play football and stayed local for college and kind of followed the career of powerlifting or have you had any kind of success stories in your your club on campus i actually so matt boyle is one of my kids um he started with me three years ago. We started the powerlifting club three years ago. I had six kids, uh, Joey, Matt, Jake, and a few others. And Matt, three years later, I took him to the state championships in Florida this year, and he placed fifth, and he did awesome. And he's going to the University of South Carolina in August as a freshman, and he wants to continue to compete and train. And so I'm, I'm psyched for him. I'm so happy for him. Um, I have another kid, Joey Giacalone. He's um, staying local. Um, he's going to play football at Framingham State. So, but he's, he's done phenomenal in the weight room. You know, a kid, when I first got in, he couldn't squat 225 and he just squatted over, he squatted like four, four fifteen um, at the last, you know, last competition. So it's, it's so awesome to see those kids just grow and embrace it. Um, and I have a couple kids, Jay, another kid, Jake, he wants to get more into the Olympic lifting side of things. So, um, so it's good. It's awesome to see. And I've had kids that have gone on now that they want to be strength coaches. So I have three kids now going off to Springfield College that want to be strength conditioning coaches or athletic trainers. They come back. They help me with my summer program. So it's it's been really, really cool to see. Like I feel old right now because I'm like, wait a minute, you're graduating from college? When did that happen? You know, so it's it's uh, it's really cool. Absolutely. So that, that touched a little bit on the next question that I was going to have. Do you have any sort of assistantship? program there or a, a volunteer set up or an internship program or is that are those some um, assistance that you're able to um, pay in the summer yeah so in the summer I last summer I had 580 kids in my summer program um, I was able to hire five five uh, strength edition coaches including myself um, and then I hired five um, CIT like um, high school kids that would help out with the, with the groups and everything as well. During the school year, during the fall, I get one assistant position. It pays like $1,200. So I usually end up getting a paid, I call it a paid internship position. Um, and then I'll, you know, if anyone wants to come in and intern, they can. And then the winter I get uh, two assistants and in the spring I get one assistant. Okay. So, but my son, my, in the winter, I had 190 kids in my winter program in an 1800 square foot weight room. That was interesting to have to uh, manage. <laughs> and that was just with you and two assistants. Yes. Correct. Okay. Yes. Correct. Correct. Oh. Um, what about the sport coaches in the weight room? Do you welcome them? Do you kind of Absolutely close the welcome them? I actually require it um, that the coaches are there. One, it shows that the coaches think that it's important. The weight room is important. They're not just dumping the kids, oh, go lift kind of thing. It's important to them, and that's why they're in there. So it is required of the coaches to be in there um, to help coach, to be another set of eyes. Um, you know, I, I definitely welcome it. You know, and, and they know they're they're not they're not there saying, well, you need to do this instead of this and what, you know, Leanne tells you to do. You got to do A, B, C, D. They're actually like, hey, whatever you want, want us to do and wherever you want us to be, we'll support you. So it's, it's, it's a great, uh, you know, it's a great environment. And I truly have the best job in the world at Franklin High School in, in that weight room. So I, I really do. So Very cool. Joe wants to know if you could explain that some, what your summer programming looks like and what the, what the layout is. Okay. Um, so the summer itself. So from 630 to 8, I have football. So all my football guys grades 10 through 12. I don't allow freshmen into that group. Uh, uh, we have our own separate time for freshmen. Um, we go with three day. Every day is a lift, uh, lift and a run. It's an hour and a half session. We start in the field. I split them off between linemen and skill. And my skill group, I go skill grade ten and skill grade eleven, and then I go linemen typically all together because we don't have as many linemen. Um, they'll do the linemen are obviously more short, short distance, explosive. You know, my linemen. Yeah, they're going to run a 300-yard shuttle, but, you know, they'll run some 110s, but I'm not running them any longer than that as far as distance-wise goes. I don't believe in distance um, 
for any, really any of my kids, um, except for our soccer, because the soccer guys do a little bit more. Um, we do have some other girls that do come in during that time because they have to work or whatever. Um, from 8.30 to 10, I have my Olympic sports, my boys' Olympic sports that come in. So grades 10 through 12, it's my soccer, it's my baseball, it's my basketball. And I do gear that towards, and I group mom based on conditioning and metabolic conditioning. I know I'm not going to make my basketball kids or my baseball kids run the same as I'm making my soccer guys. My soccer guys, they're going to be in their own separate group. They'll have their own separate workout in terms of the weight room stuff. Um, but then basketball will be separate because they're, you know, they're winter sports, you know, hockey separate winter sport. Um, then I do girls from 9.30 to 11, and then I do freshmen from 11 to 12.30, and then I have a middle school, and I also do middle school at the same time as I do freshmen. Um, and then I do like a young kids kind of fitness group, um, kind of fun and games kind of thing um, from like 12.30 to two. so. Well, this next question is coming um, from Ed Smith, he, and he's at the college level. He's at Lynchburg yep. College. I hope I said that right, Ed. Um, it's always confusing. Lynchburg University, something University. Lynchburg College, I believe, is right. He can correct me if I'm wrong. Excellent. Lynchburg College. Um, as you send off kids to college, what's yep. communication with those coaches? Is there communication? Um, what does that communication look like? And then um, if you can explain that first and foremost, but then what is your hand in assisting that athlete that's maybe a graduating senior or, or knows early on where they're going? How do you assist them in that? So kids, if I know during the school year and they have a program, they committed, they sign the dotted line, their strength coach sends them a program. We go through the program. I make sure the kids know everything. If And I was a college strength coach too. And if – you know, if a kid, I usually send out a basic program when I was at Boston College, Arizona State, wherever I was at, because I didn't know what the incoming freshman would do. But if someone reached out to me and said, hey, my kid's been training for four years, they know how to clean, they know how to squat, then I'll reach out to the strength coach and say, hey, you know, I have your, you know, your future athlete here. Um, they know how to do all these things. Do you want them on a more advanced program or, do, or is this how you want to keep them and, and progress? So I will definitely reach out to coaches and, and, and talk to them. One of the bad things is um, in terms of once they're done at Franklin High School, as, a, as an athlete, they're done. There's no um, – they don't have let alumni come back, and it's because the weight room is too small. They're afraid of liability, whatever it is. We're trying to change that culture, and I'm trying to change it with the new principal to where, hey, you know, we really need to bring back our alumni. Alumni are important. Um, and then kids bring in their programs and say, all right, you know, we'll do, I'll do a college, a college program or a college um, group time, and then you guys bring me your program. We'll go over your program. We still have me helping to coach you while you're doing your college programs. And I know a lot of places, you know, um, private facilities, they're like, nope, you're going to come in. You're going to do my program. You know, you're not doing your college program. And I never looked at it that way kind of thing. Awesome. Ed said absolutely need to keep pushing for that. I love that. I don't know if you saw that on the screen. Yeah, I just so saw it. it. Yeah. Excellent. Um, is, there, is there anything, a, a question – um, as far as what Ed was saying, I know that we discuss a little bit on the front end some of your safety concerns for the Olympic lifts especially. Is there anything that you say, hey, this is in the program, or, or maybe an athlete, we talked about it on one of the earlier roundtables, forgive me because I don't remember what coach we spoke with, and we said, well, rarely does a college coach send a packet back that has you know, um, something that's expected for a high school athlete to have a 1RM snatch. But I've seen it. I've, I've seen, seen it too. It. And I've seen coaches expect them to do 90, 95% and maybe even push over 100%. Um, is there anything that you say, hey, this, is, this isn't this is going to happen in this weight room? Or, you know, this athlete, maybe one athlete's ready for it. Another athlete just is not there. Um, is there anything where you kind of put your foot down as far as that goes? You know, if I see an athlete struggling um, in terms of their technique and they're not ready for it, then I will definitely say, and I'll shoot a, the strength coach the email and be like, hey, this kid is nowhere near, you know, what what you think they can do or what they should be doing. Or they were injured, you need to back off their percentages or have a modification for them. Um, but if a kid's not ready or coming off of a surgery or coming off of, you know, five games, then I will definitely say no, not doing A, B, C, or D, whatever it may be. And will that, you'll have that athlete, like say, um, I guess we didn't ask this question. First, how do you split up your teams as far as training goes? Do you have class periods? 
Um, secondly, however that may work, do you keep the athlete in with their group or team and then allow them to kind of go off on their own and follow their college packet once they're a senior or once they're finished competing for Franklin? Um, yeah, once they're done with Franklin, um, we'll go through their, their college program and they can do their college program. Absolutely. Whenever they want Whenever or are they you going to? Whenever they want. Because I have two girls now that committed to Assumption College to play soccer. They have their program um, and they come in and they do their program with their, with their their what they want them to do. And I'm totally 100% fine with that because I want to support those kids and their college endeavor. And again, I was a college strength coach, so I get it. Um, what about the... Um... Do you have class periods on campus? We do. So I teach a um, strength conditioning class. Um, I have two, two strength conditioning classes, but it's not it's not always left for the athletes. It's it's an elective, so kids take it. So I may have athletes in it, and I may not have athletes in it. If I have athletes in it, um, I do I do allow them to do their after school program in class. Um, and then if they're non athletes, then I have a you know progression that I take them through. Um, I would love to be able to get all of our athletes through during the day. I think that would be the best thing for them. But our school is not ready for that yet. You know, we have a great we have a great PE department. We have a great director um, of health and wellness, Kristen. She's awesome. Um, and we do have our, we're getting a new AD, um, but the AD um, who hired me. Um, he was awesome to me. Um, and I think that eventually as it grows, I think it'll become better. And I think hopefully we can get more of those classes in. So I can, all I can do is teach strength condition classes throughout the day, get all our athletes in and not have to worry about after school and in room and size and all that stuff. Do you have them coming in the morning? We don't do mornings. Um, I actually do a teacher boot camp two days a week in the morning and keep our teachers fit. <laughs> Is that is that by again? This is another question of mine because it's something I've really been toying with because I know the stresses of being a high school student, especially. I probably it sounds like your school is a high academic. Yes. Um, ours being a, a big um, college prep school, their academic standards, especially when they're playing sports, they're up late. Yeah. Um, I don't want to cut out of their sleep, especially when I talk to them on a daily basis of sleep. Um, so it's been something that I've been weighing back and forth, and that's why I ask. Um, what do you think about training the athletes in the morning? I mean, for me, I get up this morning. I was up at 4 o'clock in the morning and at the gym training. So it's not a big deal for me. But I think for kids, I mean, they're talking about making kids, you know, class start later. We start at 7.35 in the morning and then there's rumblings going around saying, oh, you know, it's 2 or 7.35 is too early. These kids stay up too late. Well, what do you do? You push it to 9 o'clock start. They don't get out of school till you know, 3.30. Then you're pushing their practices later, their work later, their homework later. Now, instead of going to bed at 1 o'clock in the morning, they go to bed at 3 o'clock in the morning. So I think it's kind of cyclical that, you know, you know, you got to give and take a little bit. So, but the mornings I've had some kids that say, Hey, I want to come in before school. Um, but it's only, we ran a before school program. We had four kids that came and that was it. So was not very popular. Gotcha. Um, Coach Gurdon, I see your question there, um, and I'll get to it after this one just because we're talking about a uh, daily basis. Liz wants to know any game day training in season. Um, that's where I'm getting to. When I was at the college level and worked at men's basketball, my guys would come in game day, and they'd come in and train. Um, the high school kids don't get that yet. Um, and I think they're too afraid. I have some of my kids in my classes, my speed and strength classes, they're like, well, I have a game today. I can't work out today. You know, if we lose, it, it, it's going to be my fault. I'm like, you're crazy, but okay. You know, so it's going to come with educating the kids and educating them. No, it's actually going to stimulate your nervous system. And I guarantee you, nine times out of ten, you're going to play, play a little bit better. You know, um, so that's that's been a work in progress for those kids in terms of in season, or working the day of kind of game day training. Sure. So. Um, Coach Gurton wants to know if you do anything with nutrition we or if you're allowed. We do talk about nutrition with our kids. If anyone wants to, I kind of put it back on the kids a little bit to take responsibility because I have some kids that, well, just give me a diet. Well, I can't just give you a diet. First, it's illegal for me to give you a diet. I'm not a registered dietitian. I can give you guidelines. But if I don't, if I tell you to eat, you know, eggs for breakfast and you don't like eggs, how long are you going to stay on that diet for? You know, so I have the kids do like my fitness pal. 
or choose my plate and have them log in their food. And then I go over with them. So there's an educational piece along with it. It's not just me saying, hey, you need to eat, you know, protein and veggies and carbs and good carbs and stay away from the candy and things like that and the junk food. It's this is what you're missing throughout. You know, you're eating too much sodium and going to Chipotle and you're getting that big burrito that's 1,200, 1,300 calories in one sitting. And they're like, Ooh, that's gross. You know, are you going to Taco Bell, which I call it toxic hell is what I call it. And um, I'm like, you're not getting any nutritional value out of that. So it's with the nutrition, I always put it back on them in terms of making it educational for them and saying, all right, we're going to, I'm going to have you do some of the work on on top of it. But I give them like um, easy breakfast ideas, quick and easy breakfast ideas. I give them quick and easy snack ideas, like stuff on the run, because everyone this day and age is on the run and running and going and five different directions from this practice to that game to that practice as young as middle school kids are doing that now. What is is the area like? I know we talked and touched on it a little bit uh, and and you could be honest. What is the area like as far as maybe a a high school professional strength and conditioning coaches in the area? Is it something that the school board and and community and area has bought into yet? Um, But what is the the Massachusetts or, or Franklin area? What is that? look like so um you mean private like private facilities or no as far as i mean is there anybody is there any full-time strength and conditioning coaches on any campuses like yourself um is there any part-time coaches is there any facilities that contract out but in a more serious role than just kind of trying to pay the bills yeah most most of the people in Massachusetts, there's not a lot of strength coaches at high schools. It's myself, it's Katie at Milford. There's um, Coach Fanaro, who's awesome at Zavarian. Um, they're trying to get a get one at CM, but they contract out with a Velocity or a, one of the um, not Velocity. There's another name place that they contract out with. So a lot of them contract out. But most of those schools that contract out with strength conditioning facilities, strength conditioning facilities, all they want is them, okay, I'll go in there, but I'm going to try to drive my facility so you can pay me more money kind of thing. Um, so it's a little bit different in the Northeast. Um, you know, parents now are trying to, oh, my, I got an email today. My 10-year-old son, you know, needs a personal trainer. He's going to be the, ne- he's going to be the next Dustin Pedroia. Okay, well, you know, or he's going to be the next Tiger Woods. I've gotten that from, eight, from a parent of an 8-year-old. You know, my kid's the next Tiger Woods. Where's the kid now? Burnt out from sports, you know. Um, but we have, I'm trying to think, you know, most, most, of, most of the high schools around here all are contracted out, if at all. You mentioned, sorry, as I'm typing a question to Coach Gurdon here to make sure I, I ask the same question that he did. You mentioned that, um, I guess, Coach Gurdon, if you could just say yes or no, if that answered yeah. your question, he asked, are there more high school coaches? I think that might have been what he was alluding to. You mentioned that I think CM was the name of the school that you brought up, yep. was looking to start a position. Have you, um, how are you on the inside of that? I know that you have the information. Have you played a part in them creating that position or have they seen the success that Franklin has had? Um, well, the, the AD there is, um, I worked with him at Boston College. So he was a baseball coach. So, and I was a strength coach there. So they're looking at, you know, trying to grow their athletic department um so and i think that they were looking down the road to, to create a full-time type of position so um and then they built a new weight room they put in a whole huge whole huge bubble so i think it's something that they want to do definitely on the road and they see other schools like st john's prep they have a strength coach at st john's prep so a lot of private schools and the prep schools do have strength coaches but the but public schools definitely not very only a handful do you have any meetings with parents or information sessions with parents as it pertains to your programming, um, either the strength and conditioning program or nutrition? And that's coming from Ed Smith again. So our parents, that's something that I want to do more of is the educational piece for parents. Um, I think it will come down the road where we're going to do more educational with the new AD and how we're trying to do more outreach type stuff. Um, right now we don't do a lot but i do communicate with our parents like i'll send emails out to everyone um to the parents you know if they have questions they can ask questions um i'll send them home with nutrition information i'll email out different things so but we don't have any like a formal formal meeting or anything gotcha um so the viewers know we we got started late um and i'm gonna i'm gonna 
kind of close out with my last three questions, but these three questions are very general and just about what the future holds for not just yourself, all of us. If you've got another question that you really want to get in, we can get it in. Um, it, Coach has been gracious with her time and willing to take the time out for one and be patient with us starting late that we really appreciate. But two, um, agreeing to kind of stay, stick around a little bit longer. So I'll close out with these couple questions. But again, it doesn't mean that we're just closing out. You can send a question up. And if I feel that I can get it in and coach wants to answer it, we can certainly get that um, through. So, so my question to you is the next five, 10 years for the state of high school strength and conditioning. Um, what do you think needs to be done? What do you think will be done? What do you think can be done? What do you think the members of this group and round table can do um, to make it even better? I think, well, I think from a whole national standpoint, I think licensure is something that would help in terms of, the profession as a whole, um, setting up strength conditioning as a, you know, on the same lines as physical therapists and athletic trainers. I think strength conditioning needs to have that as well. Um, and I think it's going to bring us more credibility. I think with the day and age of kids playing year round sports and injuries happening, I think that from a, um, preemptive, preemptive approach, you know, pre, you know, injury prevention type thing. I think strength conditioning coaches need to play more of a role in the high school setting. And, and I think ADs, good ADs, and I think as ADs start to rise and they played sports, I think it's going to only get better for high schools. And I think they're going to see that, hey, it's really important to have high school strength coaches, not just college and, you know, and beyond. Thank you. Um, the last question, I'll close with this. Um, through our Facebook posts and, and letting everybody know who is going to be on this roundtable, I don't think there's been as much excitement as there has been for this roundtable. And I think a lot of that, honestly, has come from all of the coaches, but especially the young coaches, um, and especially young female coaches that are looking um, into getting into the profession or growing themselves in the profession. Um, what is some advice that you have for them? It can be for male, it can be for female, just a young strength coach that's looking specifically at the high school level um, to come up and, and build something where they're at. Honestly, it's meet as many people as you possibly can, talk to as many people as you possibly can, and learn from as many people as you possibly can. You will always take, always take, you can always take something away from every situation that you're in. Um, I think that, um, you know, the more you meet people, I think now it's, it's, becoming more and more where, co where kids want to get involved or students want to get involved in strength conditioning, but it's really all in who you know. Um, it's and it's who you connect with. And I can't say it enough. If you have to intern, if you have to take out a, you know, a loan to go intern and do a free internship down in Arizona or Texas or wherever, do it. It gets worth, it's worth its weight in gold down the road. It really is. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, coach. Thank you for your Thanks, time. Guys. It turned out to be significantly or well, not significantly but a little bit longer than we expected just because of the mishaps of technology we're going to blame it on technology and not um <laughs> me or you um I, I just want to thank you for you know personally for being on and for taking the time out and for being willing to answer my questions and i know that everybody that's members and, and then that have participated in the group are especially thankful um again like i said the 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 feedback was tremendous as far as hearing who was going to be on it. And I know the feedback's going to be even great, even greater of the results of the round two. Uh, I think it's been phenomenal. I've learned a lot. I think I can speak for all the coaches that we've learned a lot just in all of these thank yous. Um, and you can read through that and see all the thank yous on there. People really appreciate your time and, and especially. My oh, thanks for having me. Of course, coach. Thank you. Thank you very much for being on. Like I said, I'm going to pause this recording. Um, I saw Coach Vanderbilt's question. That's going to be a good off-the-record question, and we can talk a little bit and um, kind of get yep. thought, okay? All right. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thank you.